That's not counted for your evaluation, my love. <laughs>
is what we find it, and the doctors of truth and the circle and circles that we all saw yesterday. And also we saw the young industry. But I'm not going to talk all of them. It will be so boring. And my friends will handle them. That's what they mean. Thank you, everyone. And I have a different elaborate on this. This 88 SP is not according to the convention. It should be south 88 degrees east. We are sorry for that. And now let me introduce the structure we saw at site 2. Um, first we saw the vertical structure here and then we went to the west and saw the fault, the anti-clean anti here. Let's, let's fix on this part, the vertical bendings. Okay. These are, these are uh, vertical bendings, and we can find the cross bendings in these ver vertical bendings. And also in the east, there we saw we saw the conglomerate and then sandstone, which is, which contains cross beddings, and then conglomerate again, and then sandstone. And here is the limestone, which is uh, folded. Let's see. Let's see further into the cross bedding. Here is the cross bedding. So we can. We can infer from this cross bedding that this is the upper part of the bed formation and this is the lower part of the formation. They tell me to say expand the angle. Because this angle is um, more it is more it is steeper than this part. So we can we, we can do you want to say? Okay, so uh, we can we can infer from it that this is the upper part. Um, we can also tell about the environment that it was in, um, with the huge rocks in the conglomerate over there. You can tell that there was a rapidly moving river, so because they deposited the big pebbles, as opposed to the small fine grained rock over here, which is a slower moving river. Uh, uh, what I was saying that we will be explaining about the graded bedding here. The graded bedding was like this. There were bigger pebbles here. We are not able to see because the resolution is not so much, so good. So uh, there were bigger, like uh, we should not classify them as pebbles, but bigger sand grains here. And uh, there were smaller sand grains here. So the, the next uh, uh, like picture, picture, yes, this one. This one shows it. And uh, Chang will explain it. This shows the sedimentary environment. Um, above sea level, usually conglomerate tends to form. And in shallow water, the sandstone tends to form. And also in shallow water, limestone can form too. So um, one of the things we were trying to figure out were why there were no fossils. And um, we came up with several hypotheses as true scientists do. And um, one of the ones that we came up with was that there could have been glaciers in the ancient environment, and that would have meant that it was so cold and harsh that it was abiotic and there wasn't any life. So if the Korean continent had drifted to one of the poles, then we feel like this hypothesis would be the most plausible. But we also thought that it could be possible that there was a desert, and it was also the opposite, so hot and dry that there was no life. And we also thought that there was could have been an oxidative environment, I also want to elaborate about the desert thing. The rounded pebbles are supported by glaciers because the glaciers abrade the rocks. So maybe the rounded, the desert thing is not supported by the rounded pebbles. But it is also one of the hypotheses. Maybe we can get something, some other proofs about that. The oxidative environment is that uh, the whole sedimentary feature, uh, many part, most of it was sandstone. Uh, 
sandstone gets deposit can get can or it, it gets deposited in many places, but it has, can also get deposited in alluvial uh, fans. So there is a lot of sand uh, in alluvial fans. The alluvial fans, the river just comes from far away and it, it just over there. So what happens is that the uh, total amount of total volume of water remains the same. The surface area increases, so the depth decreases. Maybe oxygen dissolved more at that time, and maybe the oxygen just oxidized the carbon in fossil and made it carbon dioxide and made it, uh, it was added to atmosphere. So, uh, the, the, the reason we thought about this was that Sir pointed to us, the professor pointed to us that there were fossils on the right side at the limestone, there were fossils at the left side on the limestone, but there were no fossils in the cliff formation. And we will go to the next one. This is an example of a life that may not have been there if there were glaciers. <laughs> so these are the structures that we found interesting in the site one. And you can see that here are strange folds of structure here, but we can see you we can see the we can see the gentle or shape fold down the strange <laughs> and complex fold. So, uh, and uh, and we also found that uh, the strange folds are mainly composed of shell, and the down the the downwards of at, at the bottom of the strange folds, the gentle shape fold fold were mainly was mainly composed of limestone, not shell. So we made uh, five hypotheses on basis of this uh, geologic structure. And we have hypothesis as to why there are this kind of structure. But actually, I have been a little bit nervous when other teams talk about this, talk about the hypothesis, because I, I was afraid that they will, they will state the hypothesis the same as us. But however, I'm here to tell us that uh, yes, it's different. Yes. <laughs> so the first hypothesis is um, due to slump. Uh, maybe other teams have, have said about it, but we have think of uh, the uh, exact reason why slump can cause the the strange structure. Uh, which was the, especially we thought about orogeny because. It was spread in a very large area. Yeah. So, so, I will explain the first hypothesis now. If this is the beddings, and this is sed sediments, and the orogeny caused some part of the land to, to be lifted, this part of the land is lifted, and this part is not. So there is a slope, right? And the, because it is a slope, so the sediments is likely to to slump down, slump down like this, okay? And then after the slump, you can see from this side. This hypothesis okay. can be strongly supported because the in the photo the anticlines were very prominent and the synclines were like simple ones. Here the anticline is very prominent and the synclines. And then the fault happened. So that uh, th we think this is why the upper part is um, more seriously folded, but the lower part isn't, is less seriously folded. This is our first hypothesis. And the second, did you turn up the Thank you. And the second hypothesis is different, differential resistances to compression. Because um, the beddings are different in the in the in the folds, and each kind of rock has its resistance to compression. So if there are different kind of beddings, different kind of formations, they have different kind of resistances to the to the compression. And if the lower part is more resistant. To the compression, then it would uh, it would 
be folded less, and the upper part will be folded more seriously if it is less resistant to compression. This is strongly supported by the hypothesis that, uh, sorry, this hypothesis is strongly supported by the fact that the shade we saw was very precise. When we touched it, it just uh, like uh, came down like anything. So, uh, this, uh, not that deep exactly, like if we did something. And uh, the shear was very precise, it, it broke away. So uh, maybe uh, it was like more uh, plastic and it, it could deform uh, over a large uh, geologic, uh, like uh, when, when forces uh, uh, took, uh, were applied on a large scale, uh, both in space dimension and time dimension. And uh, uh, this, these two things may seem contradictory that a uh, brittle rock can be thick, uh, like plastic. But uh, this thing can be explained easily when we look at the glass. Glass is extremely brittle, when it falls down it, it cracks. But, uh, but uh, during, in, in 100 years the lower part of the glass thickens and the upper part thins down. It is due to the flow of glass. So uh, actually uh, it seems supposed but uh, due, if the forces act for a long time, uh, this uh, brittility and uh, this uh, like <coughs> the, the movement, uh, plasticity are related. And, uh, Pop quiz, wake up, everybody. What kind of fossil is this? It's not a fossil, it's chocolate. Uh, okay. Oh, <laughs> well, I'm so sleepy. Don't sleep again, let's, let's go to the <laughs> hypothesis. The third hypothesis is regional compression. Um, could, could you please turn on the light? If, if the upper part of the sediments was, was pressed, at the, pressed from farther away, like this, and the lower part is pressed not so farther away, like this. It is pressed farther away from. It is pressed farther away. You see? So that the upper part is more seriously compressed, and the lower part is less seriously, seriously compressed. This is the third hypothesis, the, uh, regional compression. The, like, we were not very supportive of this hypothesis, regional compression, because the, the difference between the upper layer, that is the confusing layer, and the lower, like, the fine layer, is the difference was too fine. The thickness was about, uh, like, uh, maybe 15 centimeters. So, the, what, if, if the differential compression happens, like regional compression, then it must occur on a large scale, not not just that uh, 15 centimeters above there was regional compression and below it there was no compression at all. So uh, we were not very supportive, but it is again a hypothesis. Um, okay, and this is the fourth hypothesis. This is the uh, vertical reversal with uh, uh, Taylor sir uh, proposed. Uh, this hypothesis is like. Uh, uh, okay. How can we, uh, can we think it as uh, opposite, like, uh, can we go to that photo now? Okay, okay, let it be. So, can we think that these layers were uh, above it and this layer was below it, it was like upside down. Maybe this, this folded first and maybe afterwards these layers were deposited and again a secondary fold happened. But, uh, and uh, like, when we see the, uh, the facility of shape and uh, the amount it is, uh, it, is, it has bended from like this to almost 90 degrees, from uh, 0 degree to almost 90 degree. Uh, this doesn't seem to be very difficult. Like we know that there was large amount of compression because the shale layer has bended till 90 degree. But uh, this is very difficult, so if we use the Occam's laser, we will just cut it off. But this is again a hypothesis. The fifth hypothesis was uh, uh, like uh, we, uh, I and Shankar sir discussed it. This is the drag fold. The, it is about like uh, the upper layer. Okay, may I just draw it? Thank you. This is the 15 centimeters 
This is the 50 centimeter thick shale layer which I am talking about. It was very prominent in the sea. It was like noticed by Tom sir. And the, what Shankar sir told us that, that maybe this, the above layer went this way, the below layer went this way. So due to this transform type movement, this type of structure is added. Oh, sorry. And uh, this, this layer was very dark and it, it showed signs of lateral compression. Like it was very much compressed uh, to 50 centimeters. So maybe this may be one of the good hypothesis. Chang will continue. Okay, then let's talk about side two. At side two, we saw fossils and alternating shale and limestone and sandstone and coal mine. First, we saw we saw fossils. The, the, the picture is the fossils we saw. The fossil we saw actually is not fusulina. It is the wrong. It, it is not fusulina. I'm sorry. I think that is pivot shell. And pivot shell, pivot shell, uh, used to live in shallow water. So. This can, maybe this can indicate the sedimentary environment then. And the alternating shale and limestone can indicate um, just as the other thing had talked about. Uh, yes, uh, I, I wanted to just add one sentence on that. The alternating shale, shale forms in deep ocean and limestone forms in, uh, forms in shallow ocean. The alternating shale and series limestone for such a large area from, from the beginning till about one kilometer, uh, it is uh, like, uh, I just wanted to say that it is very, very surprising. It means that everything on earth works in a cycle. Sea level goes up and comes down and goes up and comes down for so long. So, so, that is okay. So we have no time, so we have to at least skip something. And this is the this is the shell. This is the um, oh no, that is not limestone. This is <coughs> sandstone. We saw we also saw sandstone as side two. Next one. This is the sandstone coating, and um, this gives us the evidence that why the sea level relatively rise and drop again and again because there, there is um, compression. And why there is compression? Because it is because of the orogeny. So this is one of the evidences. Hello everyone, I'm Oscar Lenten. Uh, I don't want to talk so much about as the time is going, yes, you know. Some other lives were, you know, much more abundant and hurt in Precambrian time, you know. As you read know, from the textbook, a biological phenomenon or non biological phenomenon, and we call it abortive, that's the non biological. Um, so now it's very you know, famous, the first way, very first way in Richard, and famous by uh, Thomas Abelian. The oldest fossils, and the certain model is, you know, is means everything as you know, Chris said. Chris said it was really mean everything, right, Chris? Yeah. Yes. There were a lot of people just in a certain model. If there were no process like this, we won't be like this. You know, we won't be living like this. It's so it's everything. You know, no oxygen means no humans and no living things, right? So we have to thank certain metal lines, right? Please say thanks for the metal lines. Last 
um, lactic acid, and they can do other types of alcohol al fermentation. They don't use lactic acid, they produce lactic acid primarily. Right. But there's anaerobic respiration. I'm trying to remember Mr. Sanborn's <laughs> biology class last year. It takes me a few minutes. <laughs> Um, you can find them in extreme environments, such as like really salty, like halophiles. Black smokers. And really hot environments. So. The aerobic ones are uh, like, uh, they, they dominate over the anaerobic ones. So in normal conditions, aerobic ones uh, overpower the anaerobic ones. So we don't find anaerobic ones in normal conditions. Only in extreme conditions where the aerobic ones don't live, we find anaerobic ones. You all made the hypothesis. Uh, this area was located at the pole uh, during the Paleozoic. Yeah, is that right? No, we did not make that hypothesis. We just proposed. You made it uh, based on the fossils. You cannot find fossils. And why there is no fossils? You made the hypothesis. Right. This area was. If they were at the poles, because this northeastern part of India, like China and Korea, I have read in a book that in a paper in Scientific American that there is this confusion about this area. So some people say that it was at Gorbana land. So maybe if, if it was at Gorbana land, it was at Gorbana My question is, really nice for the folks in this area, there are so many kinds of carbonate rocks. Is your hypothesis correct or false? Okay, carbonate rocks that don't form. Where does it fall? Carbonate rocks. Yeah. In shallow marine environment. Yeah. Or in shallow marine. Sorry? So all carbonate from the shallow marine. Yeah. No, no, no. Shallow water is. There are so many shallow seas around. Right. right. So yeah. the, one more necessity is uh, like either neutral or basic environment. Because acidic environment will just uh, remove the carbon dioxide. The temperature of sea water is very important for the formation of carbonate rocks. Okay. More uh, discussion will be done uh, after this presentation and free time. Okay, thank you for your presentation. Thank you, thank you all, uh, Team 4, ABCD, uh, for your uh, preparation.